This product is ideal to install over radiant floor heat and slab on grade floors. The engineered backer is a 12 millimeter thick FSC certified exterior grade plywood. It has a six millimeter wear layer. So this gives the product an overall thickness the same as a solid wood product. It's great to glue down on these floors. A little bit about slab prep here. One thing that you can do ahead of time is we rolled on a vapor barrier that goes on underneath the mastic. It's rolled over the whole floor. We use bonus system. You can do an all-in-one vapor barrier and mastic that doesn't have to have the previous vapor barrier rolled on. But in our case, it was a little cheaper and a little bit easier to just go ahead, roll on the vapor barrier ahead of time, and then when we were gluing down with the mastic, we didn't have to be as concerned about full coverage and spread. Before spreading our glue, we laid out all the flooring in the different rooms so that we had kind of evenly distributed the different widths in each room. And then that way we're not too worried about the patterns. We just randomly use up the widths as we come to them and we vacuumed all the floors ahead of time. We started this project a couple days here before we were videoing. One thing that helps is we worked from the middle of the room out. So we actually laid the middle floor, middle of the floor, we snapped a line, very straight line that was parallel to all the walls. And then we laid that middle row so we had tongues pointing both directions and then we could work uh, a halfway across the room and not have to complete the whole room in one day or worry about too much different things on the layout. And we were perfectly parallel ahead of time. Since the majority of our pieces are five foot long, it's nice to start with some random length pieces when you initially start your rows and then your layout stays random. So here where we're starting up against a wall or on a snapped chalk line, have all your pieces start out to where they're random length and then you can intermix your five foot ones from there. And you can keep your layout completely random. It's nice not to have any joints close to each other. And then also this, we're just getting ready to start for the day. We have it um, against the concrete where we're obviously starting out again. It's important that before you spread your glue, you go and check underneath your tongue here that it's completely clean and that you don't have any obstructions or old dry glue that's going to keep it from mating up nice and tight because this product's milled so accurately that your glue joints or your tongue and grooves should be perfectly tight. You'll find that when you're spreading your mastic, it just gets everywhere and makes a mess of things. No matter how clean you try to keep things, it gets on things like here's a footprint. The best thing to do is just try to be clean, try to keep some rags around to clean stuff up. But ultimately, if you're doing a full spread mastic, it's probably going to get on the surface of the floor and most likely you're going to have to clean it up. So then what you can do is just plan to have to come back later and do a light buff or screen on the floor and that'll kind of do a light sand and uh, clean the floor. What you'll notice that with our flooring here on this fully machined mixed oak, is it is pre-filled, which means there where you see the black fill, it's already been filled, it's already been sanded, it's machined very accurately, but it can benefit from an additional screen which will clean the floor if you're gluing it down. If you're doing a nail down floor, you can do glue and nail. In this case, since we're going over, going over the slab, we're doing a full spread mastic. Our textured floors are a little harder to sand because we don't want you sanding the texture off. With this being a nice flat floor, fully sanded already, it's okay to sand it pretty aggressively because you're not changing too much. So when spreading this mastic, be careful not to get too much back underneath this tongue because what will happen is if you have a large, lots of it pile up in there, it will be hard to get out as you put the board in there because you're having to pound all that mastic out that squeeze it out underneath it. So if you're starting out fresh for the day here and you've already got a row laid, you need to be careful kind of trying not to get too much of it back underneath there and it's fairly, fairly clean and light. Now when you're running your trowel along the edge here, if you tilt your trowel one direction or another, it will kind of keep the flow out in the right way and then just make sure that you're getting enough back in there but not too much. And then as you run down the length of your rows here, what I find is that you kind of want to keep about 
12 inches or so of mastic out away from you. And then when you do the next row, you're not trying to get up close to it too much, just like we're having to do right now on this first start for the day here. If you have a helper, they can always keep spreading mastic glue ahead of you, staging boards, doing that sort of thing to make it easier to where one's only having to lay the boards and pay attention to the layout. Try to keep your joints such that you don't have any joints too close to each other. It looks better that way and is nice if you're not stopping two rows right next to each other where there's a, a cold joint right, right on top of each other. Then if we go back down here, lay this first board. Once again, if you do random length boards, then our typical five foot backers will keep for a random layout. What you'll notice like on this board here is it's five feet long, but it has a splice. When they're all laid end to end, you can't tell which is the splice joint and which is the end. Our product's not in matched on the end, but that doesn't really matter because you're gluing it down. And so you're not counting on the tongue and groove to keep the, keep the product in place because the glue is going to hold it. So we'll lay this first board here. It's nice to have kind of a pounder block, keeps you from marring the edge of the wood. And our joints are pretty tight. You'll also notice that I'm wearing gloves. This mastic is just a mess. It's uh, like finger painting it with a bunch of five-year-olds. It gets everywhere and you pretty much just have to accept that that's going to happen. Lots of times before I lay a board, I make sure that a joint, like there's a joint there, there's a joint, that they're not too close to each other. And then I drop it into place. That one went in without me even pounding it. It's nice. Like I mentioned earlier, this concrete floor is terribly out of flat. It has dips and dives in it all over the place. We tried pouring level quick in it to fill in some of the voids. It's less than an ideal application. What you can do is kind of look underneath your boards as you're going along, make sure they're fully supported by the mastic and by the floor. If you happen to see a void where the concrete's not coming up to it, you can add a little bit of extra mastic underneath it. We'll give you some ideas for sorting your boards to get the best possible results. You may try to avoid putting narrow boards like this one that has the wear layer that's kind of short in the middle of your field and rather maybe sort it to where you put longer ones like this one in the middle of the field and take these short ones and put them out here close to the end. And then that way you'll get a better yield on your material. There's really no need to have any waste with this material because anything you cut off could go back and start a row or be planned somewhere else on along the edges or in closets. Another thing to look for is this material's already been defected and is 100% usable, but sometimes you'll find things in character that you don't want. Like this one has a little bit of a damaged corner, has extra fill in it. There's some fill right there. So if you just kind of think about those boards as you're going along, maybe figure out where you're going to have cabinets. For example, over here, we knew that we were going to have some cabinets in this area. So we put the boards that we felt were maybe a little too much character, a little bit too much uh, fill and so forth around these cabinet spots. And then it was a way to use up the material and it wasn't going to go to waste. And we kept sorting aside that material as we went along. Right here, we're gonna have some dishwashers and we put some material that wasn't as quite as good. We'll show you something else right here that to avoid if you can. You see these two joints? It structurally doesn't really matter too much because this is a glue down product, but aesthetically, it would be nice not to have these two wear layer seams so close together and kind of watch for that as you're doing the install. Ideally, they would be something like about this far apart. When you put this floor down though, you can't really see where the wear layer is a splice on the backer or the board truly starts and stops. Here's another trick to show you. When you're a couple feet away from the edge of the room, Plan your random widths out to where the last board will fall to where you don't have to rip any off and then you'll have no waste. So in this case, 
we were a couple feet away and we figured out what width combinations added up to exactly the it to get to the edge of the room. And if you keep your pattern completely random, the whole floor, it doesn't matter if you change your pattern up and you can come up with any combination that works with our four, five, seven combination. And if you do your initial layout based on a full inch increment away from the wall, this helps work too. So here we're at the end of the day, we've weighted down the edge of the last row a little bit. So that pushes the glue down and uh, it'll stay put overnight and cure. Well, we're done with the install here. We're doing a few last minute details before we do the final buff and sand on this floor. You can do a little touch up, clean some glue off the floor, do some final fill. The floor comes pre-filled, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't maybe identify some spots where it could benefit from a little more. You can see the black spots there. We went and used a squeeze bottle here to get it done. If you see this squeeze bottle, it helps uh, pinpoint your fill in a few little spots. It helps uh, clean up the floor and then the final sand will get that all off. Oh, and by the way, look here at our waste pile. We just did a thousand square foot floor. We can carry out our waste in a one gallon can. Essentially, there's no waste. The only time you get into waste is when you're doing maybe an angle cut like this, or you have a bad piece like that. But uh, if you're careful and you put all your shorts to start your rows and put your waste underneath cabinets and so forth, you will be very surprised at how easy this floor is to install.